Well, everyone, welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, Job chapter 41, and today's title is God's Got This. God's Got This. God is almost finished just telling Job how it is, right? He's got one more chapter of him going through this idea of, hey, listen, I, I really do have this. I promise you <laughs> that I've really got this. And we're going to finish up as God continues to encourage Job with all that he's doing and all that he's got. And maybe at the end of this, it'll be encouragement for all of us. So as we get ready to do that, if you don't mind, make sure you go to the Bible Breakdown Discussion on Facebook and make sure you're liking and subscribing to that and also commenting on that because they're doing such an amazing job. Also, we'd love for you to go to the podcast. Leave us a five-star review. It really does help other people who are considering joining our podcast, seeing how you're engaging with God's Word. That's also encouraging them to do the same. Also on YouTube, make sure that you like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel because it helps us get the word out there. There's always weird algorithms that YouTube does, and if they see more and more people engaging, it's not just to subscribe, but engaging with the videos, it lets them know this is content worth getting out there. And what would it look like for us to build this community of people that are just rallying around knowing God's word? Because man, the more we dig, the more we find. And definitely true with the book of Job. So, if you have your Bible, I want to open up with me to Job chapter 41. As we've been noticing over the past few chapters, God is really building a singular argument. And that is, I got this. There's a lot going on, Job, that you have no idea about. And I'm not minimizing your life. It's more the idea of, if I can take care of all of this, do you really think I can't handle what's going on in your life? Let's read this together and let's see if God's Word... Because once again, the point of what God is saying is he's not trying to tell Job that your life's not important. He's trying to say, if I can handle this, dude, I got you. You're going to be okay. You ready? Job chapter 41, verse 1 says this. Can you catch Leviathan with a hook or put a, no or put a noose around its jaw? Can you tie it with a rope through the nose or pierce its jaw with a spike? Will it beg you for mercy or implore you for pity? Will it agree to work for you? Or to be your slave for life? Can you make it a pet like a bird? Or give it to your little girls to play with? Will merchants try to buy it? Or sell it in their shops? Will its hide be hurt by spears? Or its head by a harpoon? If you lay a hand on it, you will certainly remember the battle that follows. You won't try that again. No, it's useless to try to capture it. The hunter who attempts it will be knocked down. And since no one dares to disturb it, who then will stand up? To me, who has given me anything that I need to pay back? Everything under heaven is mine. I want to emphasize Leviathan's limbs and its enormous strength and graceful form. Who can strip off its hide and who can penetrate its double layer of armor? Who could pry open its jaws? For its teeth are terrible and its scales on its back are like rows of shields tightly sealed together. They are so close together that no air can get between them. Each scale sticks tight to the next, and they interlock and cannot be penetrated. When it sneezes, it flashes light. Its eyes are like red, the red of dawn. Lightning leaps from its mouth, and flames of fire flash out. Smoke streams from its nostrils like streams from a pot heated over burning, uh, burning rushes. And its breath would kindle coals, for flames shoot from its mouth. The tremendous strength in Leviathan's neck strikes terror wherever it goes. Its flesh is hard and firm and cannot be penetrated. Its heart is hard as rock, hard as a millstone. When it rises, the mighty are afraid, gripped by terror. No sword can stop it, no spear, dart, or javelin. Iron is nothing but straw to that creature." And bronze is like rotten wood. Arrows cannot make it flee, and stones shot from a sling are like bits of grass. Clubs are like a blade of grass, and it laughs at the swish of javelins. Its belly is covered with scales as sharp as glass. It plows up the ground as it drags through the mud. Leviathan makes the water boil with its commotion. It stirs the depths like a pot of ointment. The water glistens in its wake, making the sea look white. Nothing on earth is its equal. No other creature so fearless. Of all the creatures, it is the proudest. It is the king of beasts. So once again, 
He is saying, see how big this thing is. See how amazing it is. See how no one can tame it and all this stuff. I made that. Since I made that, I have you. I got you, man. I, I promise you I can take care of you. It reminds me of, I remember one time, uh, my daughters, I know I'm always telling stories about my girls, but I, I can't help myself. One of my daughters, they had to have a parent come and they they go and they they have to go and like kind of tell you know a story at, at their school and this kind of stuff. And it was like there was like 10 kids in the classroom and it was gonna be like for for 10 minutes. It was like a little small thing. And one of my daughters comes up and she was like, Dad, I know you don't have a lot of experience with such things. You know, she said it a little differently, but that was the basic idea. You don't have a lot of experience, but do you think you could come speak to my class for 10 minutes? And I have to admit, I I got a little I got a little hurt. My feelings were a little hurt. I was like, you, you don't think I can come and I, I can't come and speak to your class? You, you know that I have the honor of teaching God's Word every weekend, right? But you don't think, I promise you, baby girl, I got this, okay? I, I promise you I got this. Now, you know, the story was, actually, I learned it's a whole lot more difficult to talk to a bunch of little kids than it is adults, and I was more terrified <laughs> to be in front of those 10 little kids than I was to teach God's Word on Sunday, but the point was, is like, I am, I am overqualified to come do this. And I was thinking about that as I was preparing for this chapter. When we, when we ask God, God, do you think you could help me with this? Do you, do you think God, you know, and, and we wonder if God could, could God heal me? Could God get me out of this situation? Could God heal my marriage? Could God, I wonder if God is up in heaven and he's just smiling at us. He's going, oh, baby, <laughs> oh, baby boy, oh, baby girl. With all of the all of the goodness I have, can I tell you, I'm slightly overqualified. I got you. I, I, I really do got you. And I wonder if, if God opened up our eyes for a moment to see all the different dimensions. Because, you know, there's, there's the physical dimension we live in, but there's also the spirit world all around us. And that God governs all of it. And he sits outside of space and time, and he just governs everything. God's never late. He's never in a hurry. He's never nervous. He's never concerned. He, he's got all of that. And then we say, God, can you do this thing? And we wonder if he can. I wonder if God just smiles. He's like, I got this. I got this. The difference is, is unlike me, who met my match <laughs> when I got around 10 little kids, he, 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 has, he has many enemies, but he has no rivals. God's got this. If God can take care of the universe, he can take care of us. And once again, remember, that is not to in any way minimize the difficulty and the depth of what you're going through. I hope you never hear that. Never, ever, ever am I trying to minimize what you're going through. I'm minimizing its ability to challenge God's goodness. It is not a match for God in any way. So instead of wondering if God can do something about it, the Bible says we can come boldly to the throne of grace and give Him everything that burdens our hearts. The Bible says to cast all of our anxieties on him. Why? Because he cares for us. Remember Job, the overall thing is trusting God's wisdom and suffering and saying, God, I trust you that you've got this even when I don't understand. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. Lord, thank you for the book of Job. That it just reminds us you're so much bigger than we can imagine. You're working in more ways than we can imagine. And God, we trust you in all things. I pray you'll give us the courage and the confidence to bring you everything and realize, Lord, that you've got this in every area of our life. Thank you, Jesus, for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, remember, after losing everything he had in Job chapter 1, Job said himself in chapter 1, verse 21, I came naked from my mother's womb. I will be naked when I leave. The Lord has given me what I had, and the Lord has taken it away. But praise the name of the Lord. He's been waiting for God to speak, and now God is basically saying, dude, I got all this. I definitely have got you too. I can't wait for tomorrow for the grand finale of Job, Job chapter 42. 